All right, if you will turn your Bibles to the book of St. John, chapter 5, verse 1. There's a, and we've been talking about some of the things that Jesus did in the healing of the blind. And this particular incident here, we tried to teach once or twice before we did, but uh, we felt like this might be what the best thing is. I feel like this is what the Lord will have us to try to uh, study on this morning. And of course, uh, first of all, I, I come to you uh, not uh, really knowing what I'm going to say. Uh, I think I, sometimes I think when I get up here, I've got a bunch of notes that I can, uh, I can say something. But, you know, I find most of the time that the Lord takes over and he'll, uh, he leads and, uh, and I'm just depending on him this morning and uh, you know these things that we say and, and that we heard time and time again but uh, it's always good to refresh our memories and you know, to those that maybe have not ever heard it uh, we're going out over the air and uh, through the wires and that word you know and uh, there may be some out there that's uh, that's listening this morning or will listen later on and I hope that they will <coughs> It might be a blessing to them. So this morning in John's Gospel, we will read a few verses here, and then we'll go over uh, into another place or two and read a little bit. But in chapter 5, verse 1, after this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. <clears throat> and there was a, is at Jerusalem a sheep's market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. And, of course, the five is a, a type of grace. We know that. And uh, we see here that there was a huge amount of people there that uh, were laying there. And uh, they were in a condition that they couldn't help themselves. Which is a type of, which is what we were, which we may some of us still be. Uh, that we can't help ourselves. Right. And, uh, you know... The, the great God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And uh, He helped us. He is our help. He is our, he is our all in all. And here we see uh, in, this, in this scripture here that in these, talking about these people that laid there, in these lay a great multitude of infinite folk of blind halted, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. Of course, you know, as you see this, you can imagine the world as it is today with all the blind, the halted, the withered, unsaved people in this world. And uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know their minds, but I assume that a lot of them is waiting for something. Uh, it may be... Uh, someone to come along and talk to them and tell them about the Lord. Uh, they may be waiting for whatever. But anyway, they're waiting. And these people right here were waiting for the waters to be stirred. And which is a, it's a type of the Holy Spirit. It's a type of, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, coming in and speaking to our hearts through the Holy Spirit and stirring our hearts. And this is, this is what, what was happening here. But this man that was laying here uh, was was more concerned about his condition physically, mentally, I mean uh, physically and fleshly. And uh, he, he had seen it time and time again because I don't believe this man was flying, but he had seen these things happen. And uh, when they would get to the water or, uh, at a certain season, that this angel would stir this water and the first one there would step in and, I, and you know, I had got with, with all of that, you know, it, it was a miracle to see a crippled man dragging himself into the water. 
And as soon as he hit the water, come out rejoicing and singing and jumping and shouting. You right, know, amen. Uh, I mean, hey, uh, and it's a type of salvation. And we, this morning, uh, uh, we ought to be praying that we can see one dragging himself down to that pool of water and getting up and rejoicing and shouting and happy and saying, I've been saved. Amen. Because, listen, we just don't see none of it anymore. We just don't see it. And my heart, my heart needs to see it, and your, your does, and, and rejoice and praise the Lord in it, because uh, that's that's what the whole thing is about, is getting ready to go and, and being saved. And this is what this blind man was laying there for, and uh, he says that there's nobody here to even help me get down there. Now, you know, you wonder about uh, how he got, got there, how he got food or how you got anything, but he says, there's nobody to help me. And, uh, you know, there is a world out there and there's nobody to help. Them. Right. You take these, these, a lot of these countries that are, <clears throat> they don't even know the name of Jesus. They right. don't even know what it's about. They don't know how to, 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 uh, to hear somebody come up to them and, and say, can I help you? Can I tell you about Jesus Christ? Can I tell you about your soul? They don't, have, they don't have this. And this man was in the same condition until Jesus came along. And notice here, and they, in verse three, and these lay, and these lay a great multitude of them, folks, I haven't read this, but I'll read it again, of blind, halted, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, and we uh, try to study about this certain season and uh, what determined the time he went down and or what it was all about. But here's the thing that I believe: the certain season is for anybody, any time. Uh, when that Holy Spirit comes down and stirs our heart, that is the season. Mm -hmm. That is the time when that we need to open our eyes and our understanding and realize that the Holy Spirit is dealing with our hearts and that we can be saved from this condition that we're in. And so here, the, this angel went down and in a certain season, he stirred the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after that, the troubling of the water, stepped in, stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had, if it was leprosy, if it was blindness, if it was, if he was crippled, he was healed of that. Amen. But here's the thing, when the Holy Spirit stirs a heart and, and, and that takes place in there and that person uh, accepts that, listen, the same thing happens to him because his old dirty soul is sinful. He had. He got that by birth. He got it. He inherited it, and he is in the same condition here as these people here were laying out there on that seaside and uh, in that sand, wallowing around. His soul is in the same shape. And when the Holy Spirit comes and deals with that person's heart, listen, he is healed completely. Right. That soul. That soul is completely healed. It's perfect, and it will never never sin again. When, when, when God's grace takes hold and when, when a person realizes through faith that he's been saved, that soul is perfect, people. And Amen. so many people don't understand that, that that soul cannot sin because it is born, it has been born again and it's, 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 the price has been paid for it and you can't sin again. And what a, what a comforting thought that is and what why we so many times do not even have the uh, understanding or the remembrance to go and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, we have so many things that crowds us around and, 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 and all of this that we don't think a lot of times even to bow our heads and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Because, listen, people, it's, it's a terrible thing to think about a soul laying in a in a in a, a fire eternally, right, and suffering 
and 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 crying out or and, and whatever. Listen, I, I can't I couldn't say enough words to say how horrible right. it would be for a soul with this fleshly body, people. It's gonna be resurrected. And it's not gonna be it's not gonna be a pure body. It's gonna be a fleshly body that feels pain, I believe, and he's that soul and that body is gonna be in that eternal right of fire to suffer. And so this should give us an encouragement to during the day of our lives to realize what we've got and, and, and thank the Lord for it because listen, we so many times and, and, and we're gonna read some stuff over here in a minute where that the Lord uh, the God says, Hey, these people just will not listen to me. They won't obey me. They won't do nothing. And, and, and that's, they had just come out of Egypt and had seen, uh, seen some great things of God. So here's, here's, here's the thing. Uh, and listen, uh, and in, the, in, in, in verse, uh, uh, in verse five, <clears throat> and a certain man was there which had an infirmity. Thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? And this morning I can't understand, I can understand, and I can too, uh, with this flesh that we have to deal with. But when the Holy Spirit works on a person's soul and says, Will thou be made whole? And they reject it. And, you know, uh, it's it's just it's just un, unreal to me if a person can hear the outcome of a of a, a lost soul, where it's going to be, how that a soul that can reject the Holy Spirit speaking to them. It's it's just un, unreal. I can't believe I can't understand it. But here, Jesus asked him, said, "Will thou be made whole?" And the impotent man answered. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am while I'm coming, and so he he's had he's trying to drag himself to that water. Another steps down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Amen. Now you can imagine there is things in this world that is hindering people from being saved. And here he says, while I, while I am going down there, another one come and steps down before me. Well, listen, why would this happen in, in our lifetime that we are prevented from uh, uh, hearing God's word? Why that we're, we're, we're not permitted to, or the lost is not permitted to get to that that place of, of, uh, of salvation. Well, it's because that this world is so ungodly and there's so many people out there that's teaching everything in this world but the, the truth about salvation. Right. And here, here he is dragging himself and somebody comes along and steps in front of him or somebody comes along and step, says, hey, you know, this is the way you do it, not the way that you think you're supposed to do it. And they hinder that person. They stop that person from uh, from doing what the Holy Spirit would have them to do. And listen, that's a that's a hindrance. And besides that, there is so many that that out here, like I said a while ago, that does never does never hear about Jesus Christ. Right. There's these these countries, even down in Mexico and places like that. All in the world, about all in the world they hear is except with the, with the exception of a few uh, missionaries, is this Catholic religion about mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> works for salvation or depend on the Pope or depend on this or depend on that. And, and they don't know. And so they're hindered just like this poor soul here right. is. And so Jesus... <clears throat> and as he as he as he said this, Jesus said unto him, "Rise, take up thy bed, and walk." And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day, 
was the Sabbath. Now, we see here that faith, or Jesus Christ to hold His Word, caused this man to be saved, changed. Now, this man was trying to do something by works. And we this morning know that there's nothing this morning that we can do in our own selves to get us to that food right. of salvation. There's no way that we can do good enough or do anything that will cause us to get us salvation. And that's the thing that's being spewed out of the, all these false churches is works for salvation. Right. You do this and you do that and you pray this little prayer and you're going to be all right. Listen, that's that's the same shape this poor soul was in down here. He 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 was trying by his own efforts. And the only thing that helped him was Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing that will help any soul this morning or, or save a soul is Jesus Christ. And him alone. And that's that's salvation now. And so here um, he says, And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day of the Sabbath, and of course, Jesus had this, this, this John to write this by saying it was on the Sabbath day. Of course, we understand that all of these people here, uh, they started griping and complaining about the Sabbath, and he did this on the Sabbath, and, and he did this, and it's the same way this today. We've got the same problem that we've always had is that if you don't go by the little prayers, if you don't go by the uh, kissing of the ring, or if you don't go by baptism or something other way, hey, you're, you're wrong. You're not right. And so here... Here's what the, the Jews therefore said unto him that was him that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for them to carry thy bed. And he uh, for him to carry his bed. And he answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? Now, first of all, they didn't consider what was ha what had happened. The man was healed. He was healed, and they could see that. And they didn't, they weren't they weren't considered. That. They were worried about him carrying his bed on the Sabbath. He was doing a little uh, of work on the Sabbath, and of course, the the Bible says in the Old Testament for us uh, to. Uh, they, they weren't supposed to do this, and it was still in the Old Testament time because Jesus was still alive. But here's what they're, they're doing. But they don't recognize the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. They don't, they don't recognize the miracle that has took place, and that is today the big problem today. People still don't recognize what's going on in churches. They are going, the churches now is a gathering place for see and be seen and to, to, to brag on one another and if they, if one will get up and brag on himself or some and they say, oh what a great man listen it's 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 all works it's all mm -hmm. funny so here's what he says uh, and i'm going to read this now i'll get on with it but after jesus finding him in the temple said unto him behold thou art made whole send no more lest no lest a worse thing come upon thee then Man, and then the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worked here the two, and I worked. Therefore the Jews sought the Lord to kill him because not only had he broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making him equal with God. And so we see there the problem here, but I want you to I want to I want you to get another get another picture here. If you would turn with me to the book of Numbers and uh, in verse in chapter nine. Numbers in chapter nine. And I want you to remember these some of these things that and uh, uh, this this man had laid there for it says for 38 years. Now in chapter nine of the book of Numbers, notice here as they have left Egypt, uh, <coughs> Moses is leading the children out of Egypt. 
And, and the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt. So we see from here on, they, they, they travel 48, 40 years. Well, they've not spent two of them. So that leaves them another 38, which like this man had laid there for the 38 years. Right. Well, I want to show you something here. Listen. Let the, and, uh, and, uh, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at the appointed season and in the 14th month. So, so we see here that we, uh, we want to read now, and, and if you would, just, just turn over to chapter 13 of, of the Numbers. Chapter 13. Notice. And the Lord, here's, here's after the two years, and, and you remember the promise that Abraham got to the Lord. Hey, he said, he told Abraham after that Lot had left him, he said, now look out over all this place. He said, it's all yours. It's all yours. He's made the promise to him. And the Lord spake in verse 13, chapter verse 13, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search out the land of Canaan, which I have given, given to the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their father shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness. So now we look in uh, verse, chapter, uh, verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, and, and what it is, and the people that dwell therein, and whether they be strong or weak, or few or many, and as they and what and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, or what city they be in that they dwell in, whether in tents or in the strongholds. And so we see that they that that this this being the second year after their leaving, they 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 find Canaan. They've done that to Canaan. <coughs> well, as they go up, uh, they uh, they see all of this beautiful land and all of this, and they even bring back uh, fruit and stuff, and saying it's truly it's truly a land of milk and honey. And it's it's just it's just what we need. But notice uh, <clears throat> what what they said in verse twenty six. And they went up and came to Moses and to Aaron to the, all the congregation, children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran and to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and they told him, and said, "We come unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely, surely it, it, it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it." Nevertheless, the people, be strong that dwell in the land, the cities are walled and they're very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Hittites, uh, Jebusites and the Amorites dwelt in the mountains of the, of the Canaanites, dwelt by the sea and by the coast. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to cover it. Now, here's the thing. These people that were laying over there in that, in that crippled, uh, blind, right, disease place, they laid there for 38 years. This woman was laying there for 38 years. These people here had gone two years and they had, they, they was fixing to go into Canaan and they had, they possessed it. But what happened? Well, they come back and they brought a good report, but they didn't, they were afraid to go. Mm -hmm. And so Caleb, in verse 30, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up thence and possess it for we are well able to, okay. So then in verse 14, I mean chapter 14, verse one, and all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the uh, Lord brought us into this land 
to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So we see here that as they had left Egypt and they went down and after, just got out, out of Egypt and they seen this wonderful miracle happen of the Red Sea opening. Just like this man here that laid that many years and he sees somebody step down into the water and he'd be whole. He, they were seeing these miracles. They were seeing these things happen. But yet what happened here was, listen, they got, they got scared. They got afraid or something happened to them. But anyway, they got in a condition that God said to Moses, he says, Moses, they will not go into the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. They will not. And, and you know, this, this ought to show us some things going on. In, in this world today, people uh, people are are in every in every way they're afraid. They don't trust. They have not no faith. And and you see what happened here uh, that there was two people left out of all of that, and they went out there and they they went around in that land for thirty eight more years. They wandered around in that circle, and God said, "Hey, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to kill them." And listen. That's, that's, that's the thing that's going on today. People are out here wandering around and they don't know what they're looking for. Right. And the only thing that they're going to do is they're going to wander until they die. And, and it's going to be all over with them. And so it, it's, a, it's a terrible picture. It's a terrible thing to think about. So many people out here, and, and a, lot of them, a lot of them go to church. They go to church and they they hear everything in this world and they're out there they're out there waiting for another Canaan is mm -hmm. what they're doing because this Canaan here had to be taken by force. And and <clears throat> and these people seen these miracles. Uh, you know, I I think I think if I had seen some of these things that God and I do and, and you know I as I say that I the, Lord, the Spirit says, well, you do see them. Right. You do see them. You do see them. And, and you see them. And, and you see them. These miracles that God is doing in our lives. Amen. And yet, for some reason or another, we're not as strong as we ought to be. We're not a good soldier for the Lord like we should be. And uh, we, need, we, need to, uh, we need to kind of sharpen our swords a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, uh, get more in tune with uh, God's word and uh, try to do something different. So anyway, I want to show you something else. Uh, in Deuteronomy, if you would turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 2 and verse 14. <clears throat> Notice here. Verse 14, and the space in which we came from Kadesh Bardesh until we were come over the brook Zered was thirty and eight years until all generations of the men of war were wasted out from among the host as the Lord swore unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the host until they were consumed. And so yeah. it happened. And so in the book of Hebrews, if you would, bear with me a minute, we'll, we'll get there and read just a, a few verses of Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3. Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews 3 and verse 8. Notice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, 
they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest, it, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we well, hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And so it's not saying that you'll fall from grace, but it is saying this, that every day is the Lord's day. And you are to serve Him and love Him and take and and take and just take thought of Him because listen, He's the one that saved your soul. He's the one that's in charge of you, and He's the one that will take care of you. And, and so many times we our our confidence gets weak and our faith gets weak, and we say, No, we just can't do that. We can't do that. But we can do it. Amen. And we can just just keep on keeping on and that I believe is what uh, we'll, we'll see the church continue to to uh, to flourish and we'll see soul saved because listen that's God's promise just like it was to Abraham hey all of Canaan is yours it's it's, it's the whole land of Canaan is yours I'm going to give it to you and he did and it's, it's, it's Israel's right now. And so uh, that's what we need to think about is, is just keeping on keeping on. So uh, we've, got, we've got so many things here that, that we need to protect. Uh, these children is coming up. My goodness, we were just thinking about this morning how many young children we got that's not been, not been saved. Uh, they, need to be, they need to be led, they need to be shown, they need to be uh, worked with. And, uh, and the only way we can do that is to stay in tune with the Lord. Because if we if we get weak in our endeavor, by, we'll see some things that we don't want to say. So that's a lesson for today. I hope it's something here that touches frame and, and helps somebody. Okay? Thank you all. Yeah.